Hello, my name is Stefan Burns. I'm a senior geophysicist with Geometrics, though you might know me from the Science Channel show, Secrets of the Underground, and today we're going to learn about a geophysical method known as HVSR, otherwise known as the Horizontal to Vertical Spectral Ratio. The horizontal to vertical spectral ratio methodology is a passive seismic technique. Using a three component geophone like I'm holding here with X, Y, and Z directions, ambient ground motion, that is the micro tremors that are present in the environment everywhere, can be analyzed and a resonance frequency of the ground can be observed. The primary resonance frequency of the ground is important in earthquake engineering in order to better understand unforeseen vibrational side effects. Because if you construct a building with the same resonance frequency as one that is naturally occurring, well, this can happen. This was the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Well, the first Tacoma Narrows Bridge of 1940. It was a suspension bridge in the U.S. state of Washington, at the time being the third largest suspension bridge by main span. It had a fatal flaw though. Construction began in September 1938 and from the time the deck was built, it began to move vertically in wind conditions, so construction workers nicknamed the bridge Galloping Gertie. The motion continued despite several dampening measures, and the bridge was opened to the public July 1, 1940. Four months later, the bridge collapsed into the Puget Sound while experiencing 64 km per hour winds. The deck oscillated in a twisting motion, resonating with the gusting wind, and this increased in amplitude until everything tore apart. Wow, kind of a worst case scenario, right? And it was all caused by energy resonance. Enter HVSR. The horizontal to vertical spectral ratio methodology was developed in 1989 by Yutaka Nakamura. To many, HVSR is known as the Nakamura method. Since 1989, Ongoing research into Nakamura's method is being done by geoscientists around the world. Where Nakamura originally performed the HVSR method at one site, geophysicists like Koichi Hayashi of Oyo are developing the field further by collecting and analyzing hundreds of HVSR measurements simultaneously. There are a few important results that can be obtained from HSVR surveys. HSVR methods are able to determine the resonance frequency characteristics of a site, the fundamental resonance frequency of a building, this measurement needs to be performed inside the building of course, and HVSR can also be used to estimate shear wave velocity when additional geologic information is present. Planetary scientists are excited about HSVR methods because the equipment is lightweight, non-invasive, easy to perform, and takes 20 to 60 minutes. These factors make HVSR perfect for future planetary manned or robotic missions where every kilogram blasted out of orbit costs thousands of dollars. The seismic ambient noise that make HVSR measurements possible are characterized by small ground movements present everywhere, consisting mostly of superficial Rayleigh and Love waves which travel along the surface of the ground. These surface waves are produced by the constructive interference of P and S waves in the superficial layers. Wind and sea waves create surface waves, and at higher frequencies, it is also produced by human activity such as industrial noise and vehicular traffic. HVSR is a passive seismic method because these micro tremors are not excited ad hoc, such as in other active seismic methods. As such, HVSR is a completely non-invasive method and can be applied anywhere without any kind of drilling nor external energization different from the environmental noise which is present everywhere in nature. The processing for HVSR consists of estimating the ratio between the Fourier amplitude spectra of the horizontal and vertical components of the geophone. A Fourier transformation is a mathematical transform that decomposes a function, often a function of time or a signal, into its constituent frequencies, and with microtremors, there are a lot. To put the whole thing simply, the different frequencies in hertz of these microtremors and their relative strength, i.e. amplitude,
for the x, y, and z directions are computed and plotted as a horizontal to vertical ratio on the y axis with frequency in hertz on the x axis. And remember basic physics, frequency is wave speed over wave length. So why is HVSR important? Well, outside of uncommon examples like the Tacoma Narrows Bridge disaster, earthquakes have the potential for mass destruction. Every year, earthquakes kill thousands and cause billions of dollars in damage. Depending on the magnitude, shaking can last mere seconds or can continue for frightfully long minutes. The destructive potential of an earthquake and how much shaking is experienced is based on the local geology. If the natural period of a constructed building is similar to the site it's on, then when an earthquake strikes, that building is at a much greater risk of structural damage or collapse. Large 10 plus story buildings have a longer natural period, around two to 10 seconds, and smaller buildings have a shorter resonance frequency, around 0.2 to two seconds. For areas commonly devastated by earthquakes, such as along the Pacific Rim, it is vital to know the HVSR for new construction projects and also to know the HVSR for existing developments in order to determine how to best retrofit those structures. The magnitude 8.0 Mexico City earthquake of 1985 provides a fantastic case study for understanding geologic site resonance. Since 1985, the city has been well studied and I've uploaded two research papers with more information for those who seek a deeper understanding of the effects of an earthquake. I've uploaded to the description of this video the HVSR Technique Guidelines by SESAMI, a European Commission research group. And if you're looking to learn more about HVSR, start with these three documents. With the HVSR methodology and specialized three component seismographs, geophysicists and structural engineers collect vital information and work diligently to keep our homes and structures safe in the face of natural disasters like earthquakes. And that wraps up our HVSR explainer video. Please share in the comments how you think this method could be used in new and exciting ways. What are some applications that people might not have thought of? Thank you for watching this video and I hope you learned a lot about geophysics and the HVSR method. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content like this, and we hope you join us in the future. Again, I'm your host, Stefan Burns. Ciao.